Model Steam Engines Top Tip Time Part 21 All I'm doing in this episode is making a new gland nut for the Stuart S50 steam engine because the old one was worn. There are plenty of useful tips in this episode and possibly the most useful tip is how not to fill up a hole in a gland that is off centre using silver solder then attempt to drill a hole down the middle of it. That doesn't work because the drill bit follows the path of least resistance which is the brass, not the silver solder, and the hole is automatically drilled off centre. This is one of many instances when a quick fix is not always the best one. In the end, I just made a new gland nut. And this is the story. Here's the new valve rod that I made, and it's a rattle fit in the original gland nut. I want to show a potential repair to the gland nut that would work if it was bigger. But I would like to say that I'm only showing this because it's food for thought on certain repair jobs. I will make a new gland nut using a piece of hexagon brass, pretty similar to this but a bit smaller. The original gland nut over time has worn off centre. And what I'm going to do is attempt to fill up the hole with some silver solder and then re-drill it. But normally to do this job I would need to drill a bigger hole but that would weaken the assembly and it could melt or distort when I do this. For small silver soldering jobs such as this, I normally use an old piece of stainless steel grate from a model locomotive. And you may be wondering, why is this part not sticking to the stainless steel grate and being silver soldered to it? The answer is simple, because it's very dirty. And as a good tip, whenever you silver solder anything, make sure that all the parts are very clean. This part fell over a couple of times, but in the end it looked like this. Here it is lightly held by the threads in the lathe chuck and I'm machining away the excess silver solder. And this turns fairly much like brass but instead of it coming off in small chips it comes off in long lengths. I'm taking fine cuts because I don't want the part to jump out of the chuck because I've already mentioned it's just held by the threads. I don't know whether the silver solder is any better or worse a bearing surface than brass. Brass wears out very quickly. It doesn't seem to do in small oscillating cylinder engines, but then again, they don't have much pressure put on them. One more cut should do it, I think, and the end of the brass nut is flat. The first thing to do is to drill a centre hole down the work. And obviously, I'm using a centre drill that is smaller than 3 seconds of an inch. Even though the centre drill went down the centre of the work, when I use a twist drill, it's a different story. You can see it wobbling about. And I think that's due to the hole originally being off centre, filled with silver solder, so now when I try and drill it or ream it, what happens is, both the drill and the reamer are following the path of least resistance. I just wanted to show you this because it's an interesting way not to do a job. Having said that though, if I'd have drilled the hole much bigger down the centre of this gland nut, then I would have just been drilling into silver solder and I wouldn't have had this problem. But there's no point because it's a very easy part to make. So I'm going to make a complete new one using some phosphor bronze hexagon and here it is in the chuck. The first thing to do is to remove this bit on the end. This is from a previous job, I can't remember what it was. As you can clearly see from this clip, phosphor bronze cuts entirely differently to brass. And also, phosphor bronze makes an excellent bearing material, whereas brass does not. I've stopped the lathe because I need to find out exactly how much of the hexagon I need to turn down to 3 16 of an inch so I can thread it. It's nearly there, but I need to take off a little bit more. I'm using the original gland nut as a gauge. This phosphor bronze is not leaded phosphor bronze, it's the old fashioned red stuff. And although it machines okay, it can be fairly horrible when you come to drill holes in it because it gets very hot. And often when drilling holes in this type of phosphor bronze, you can see it change colour with the heat. Then it grabs the drill, then the drill snaps off. Lathe coolant or at least oil is recommended, but I'm not bothering with this part because it's very small and I don't have to drill very far down it. I use a centre drill first and now I'm using a 3 seconds of an inch drill to enlarge the hole and drill it all the way through. And the good news is that this 3 seconds of an inch drill drills fractionally undersized, so I'm going to put a reamer through there once I've drilled the hole all the way. The clicking that you can hear is when I disengage the tailstock locking lever. And in no time at all, one more click I think. Yes, that's it, the hole is drilled. 
The centre part is turned down to 3 16 of an inch and it's time to thread this using a 3 16 by 32 threads per inch die in my homemade tailstock die holder. You will notice because I've moved the piece of hexagon in the chuck, I haven't rotated it, I've just pulled it out slightly, it's not quite as true. But it doesn't really matter, once I've parted off this component I'll be turning it round to machine the other end. And here's a quick tip, when parting off small components use a twist drill smaller than the size of the hole to support the component when the parting tool goes all the way through. That way it will not fall into the chip tray and be lost forever. And here as I've just mentioned is the part reversed in the chuck and I'm facing across the front of the gland nut. And you will notice as I pull the lathe tool back at the end I just turn it slightly to the left which rounds the edge. Now because of the turning operation one end of the hole has a burr over it so I'm using the reamer to clear this. In this clip I'm doing a test fit of the valve rod into the new gland nut and it's very tight in fact it doesn't fit. So I'll just check that the valve rod is actually 3 seconds of an inch. And for this job rather than using a digital caliper I'm using my very old more and right micrometer and I'm comparing the size of the shaft to the shaft of the reamer which one presumes is exactly 3 seconds of an inch. So why doesn't the valve spindle fit? Well the solution is surprisingly simple. This is a piece of stainless steel and when I threaded it the threaded part got slightly distorted and the die raised a burr on it. A quick touch on the polishing spindle with a bit of abrasive compound took care of that and now it fits perfectly. You will notice that the shape of the gland nut is slightly different to the main gland nut on the piston rod. I've left the nut part a bit longer and this is intentional as it gives a little bit more support for the valve rod along its length. So I think this part of the job is now satisfactory but no sooner do I fit it than I remove it because I need to give the cylinder another coat of paint. That's it for this episode, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.